Hello and welcome to Brento's Movie Talk. Movie Talk with Johnny Brento. Movie Talk with Johnny Brento. I believe that's what the title says. Anyway, this is my attempt to uh, kind of uh, capitalize on my commute time and start bringing some more vlog type content to Mutantville.com. Now, uh, today is Monday, April 22nd, and I just saw the uh, opening of uh, Oblivion. 2013 on Friday starring Tom Cruise directed by Joseph Kosinski who also directed Tron Legacy and um, if I'm to believe his IMDb credit he also directed The Black Hole it seems like he might be too young to have directed that film so maybe that was a different person with the same name I'd have to look into that unfortunately Disney doesn't have a IMDb page up for The Black Hole, which seems crazy to me, because that is a classic Disney film. But, uh, ironically also, that, that was the first film that uh, yours truly ever saw in a theater. Uh, my cousin and one of his friends took me to the Center Theater in Albemarle, North Carolina, a building which has long fallen in. It had a big, beautiful marquee, and I remember The Black Hole. And I went in and at the time I thought that was the most amazing thing I had ever seen and it really sparked a lifelong love of movies and of course back then it was dirt cheap got the whole experience the soda pop the popcorn and uh, I remember going back and telling my parents oh this is just so great you gotta take me back sometime you know but uh, that really was the film that started it all for me unfortunately that film does not hold up very well but we're not talking about the black hole today we're talking about oblivion and Oblivion is a film that instantly, being a sci-fi fan, I instantly connected with. Um, Tom Cruise plays a um, plays Jack, a veteran who's assigned uh, to an outpost that's uh, there to sort of uh, maintain drones and machinery that's left behind to siphon off the last resources of a ruined Earth, primarily the water, um, and. Pretty early on, I'm going to try to do this with no spoilers. Um, I should also mention um, Morgan Freeman is the other big star in this film. Morgan Freeman. Um, but uh, the deal is, he's there as a uh, maintenance man for the drones, trying to keep uh, keep everything running. When you get the impression that they don't have, that they're starting to fall apart, the the drones are fall, starting to fall apart. But him and his comms officer, who's also his uh, mate. Um, live in this, uh, it, it appears to be a floating pack flat platform, but it's actually on a, just a really tiny uh, metal leg up a couple thousand feet up in the air, and uh, it's sort of like they're living between the giant space station, the Tet, and, and the, the ruins of Earth, and um, Jack is the only one that goes down to the Earth, and he flies this awesome bubble-shaped futuristic looking ship and has really cool <laughs> features that has like a motorcycle you can take out of the side of it all kinds of weaponry and stuff and uh, really really love the aesthetic design of all of the other uh, the, the machine the machines and the dro drones in this it just it had me i was hooked in from the get-go so even if it hadn't been a compelling story on some level i would have enjoyed this film although i found the story to be very very compelling um now being that the director had just directed Tron Legacy, I gotta say, there are some similar design elements, particularly to the clothing from the Tron Legacy film. Um, some folks look at this and say, oh, well, that copy's Tron. I'm like, no, 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 you know, it's just, a, it's a minor design aesthetic, okay? Not the overall, I mean, you can only do futuristic so many ways for a humanoid, you know? Um, so leather clothing, um, clean lines, very, very slick-looking futuristic uh, uniforms that you'll see on the characters in this film. But I digress. So Jack goes down to the planet, and of course, you know, being the guy that goes down and sees the Earth and what's left of the Earth, um, which really looks like a, largely like a, a wasteland with like a, the tops of, you know, giant skyscrapers still sticking up, but, but you know, the, the ash from the nuclear blast which the humans used to sort of finish off the aliens. I should mention it was an alien attack that brought about the uh, the end of the Earth, uh, or the Earth as we know, knew it. And several times he says, we won, but we won the war but lost Earth, uh, meaning the Earth was rendered unlivable. And he's, um, 
when he does his patrols, he's like, um, he gets to the edge of his, his sector and he gets a radiation warning, don't go into this area. So that's very peculiar and it's a bit of foreshadowing as well. But he's discovered this, um, this little, uh, I don't know what the right word for it is. Uh, it's not really an oasis, but it is an oasis. It's kind of down in a uh, crevasse. So you have the tops of these buildings and the, the nuclear ash has filled up everything to the top of the buildings. And so you have these little things sticking out showing pieces of the old universe, but then universe, the old world. But then, uh, but then there's water that just kind of like places where it digs it out, sort of like water tends to dig out like rock. Um, and you can see down in there and there's, a pe I mean, the, the design of this was amazing. I mean, they get really, I was like, I wish they'd just go explore all that. I mean, it's just really cool looking. What would all that look like, you know, after man had been gone for 60 years, it would be amazing. But, um, I digress. So he finds this oasis, which apparently, uh, he started to have flashbacks of his life, uh, prior to his uh, mission on this uh, platform and uh, he starts to see flashbacks of people and places and sometimes he'll go to these places and you know he'll have a flashback of memory from his old life now it, it, we, we're given the conceit that for the sake of the mission that both of these officers have had their memory wiped like prior to starting the mission so they don't they don't remember the old earth per se they don't remember their old life and for the in the case of the comms officer it seems to have worked perfectly she has no curiosity about it all they know is that their uh, time is up in two weeks and they're going to be taken up to the tent and then eventually sent on to this moon of saturn where all the earthlings supposedly have um, resettled so they're looking to get forward to getting back to humanity but but they are like a tight couple as far as that goes uh but just you got the one the man who, on the one hand, has these memories and is curious about the Earth and doesn't... He's, uh, he's, he's going to go, but he's unsure about leaving Earth behind. And um, from there, really, I, other than just to say that there's this, this, this mysterious uh, leftover components of the alien army we're led to believe uh, called the Scavs or Scavengers. And uh, we really only see that they're humanoid in shape. They have these stealth-like looking outfits on and they don't sound like humans um, but we only see them in flashes really when he's shooting at them or whatnot they're trying to trap him for some reason they're not trying to kill him they're trying to trap him which he finds peculiar and then as as the story goes on he finds survivors and the drones come and start killing off these uh these pods of the survivors and uh you know so obviously that that he wonders why that's happening because the drones supposedly are set to kill only the scavs not humans and of course, he has clearance because he's a tech. Tech 49, you know, and uh, they'll, um, <laughs> 42, sorry, tech, tech 42. No, or is it 49? I can't remember. One or the other. Tech 42. And um, they um, they leave him alone generally, and but he has to get between the drone and one of the victims, which he's able to save, which turns out to be the girl that he's been seeing in this flashback. So, uh, you know, the uh, intrigue builds. But uh, I know I'm rambling here, but really, I don't know how to tell you the, just that there's an amazing twist at the end um, that I didn't really... See. I did see some of it coming, but as far as the uh, who he turns out to be, I just I was I was very satisfied with the uh, the third plot point in the in the, in the story. So um, I just have to say I I found it really really excellent. It's the kind of movie that made me think about it. Like after after I saw it the next day, I found myself mulling it over and thinking like holy crap that that's crazy you know that's wild and i definitely felt the strong urge to go watch the film again um whether or not i get a chance to do that it will just come down to my schedule because i got a lot going on right at the moment and uh preparing the band for a, a performance in two weeks that's taking up all my spare time so i don't know if i'll be able to actually go see this but uh but i definitely want to and uh, i think that's a pretty good sign because that that means it was truly a solid film that hooked me in from the beginning and visually was exciting enough that I want a chance to watch it again. There, there, there's a amazing air to air battle that takes place in this thing that uh, I was just remarking the other day how much uh, I'm bored by car chases because you know, you know the capabilities of an automobile. Um, it's what are they going to do that can surprise you really unless it's like just they break the rules of physics. But uh, when you get space age technology, alien technology involved, you know, they aren't really limited the same way that we are to uh to true physics so um 
it becomes a lot more interesting, and that's that's what happened in this film. Also, visually stunning, the cinematography, the visual effects were absolutely, in my opinion, flawless. I, I never saw anything I didn't believe, so uh, I would encourage you, if you are a sci-fi film, to make sure that you get to the theaters and see this film before it leaves theaters, because it's excellent. It will definitely be going into the Johnny Rento DVD archive, let me tell you. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you guys next time.